This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. So far in these lessons, we have kind of focused on something called a clipping mask. And they're pretty easy to understand. And while I'm talking, why don't you open up opacitymasks.ai. This lesson is so amazing that I actually have to put it into three different artboards just to talk about it. Let's go back to number one here. Opacity masks are different. Let's go back and review real quick a clipping mask. The rules of clipping masks are you can clip anything that you want. Photographs, text, combinations of photographs and text, but the one rule that cannot be broken is that the mask must be vector. So what's an opacity mask? Opacity masks are a bit different. And let's talk about them as we kind of run through here. Let's start by trying to put a really nice vignette around our model. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up the ellipse tool. And I've got white as my fill color and black as my stroke. That's fine. I'm going to hold the Alt key down. Don't have to. But that draws from center. What I'm trying to do here is give me some wiggle room, if you will, at the top and the bottom. I don't want it all the way up there. And let's do maybe something like that. Now, I really don't need the stroke. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click on the stroke, and I'm going to turn it off by clicking here. So we've got a nice oval going around her, but I want it soft on the edges. Vignettes are soft. So I'm going to make sure it's selected. And I'm going to come up to Effects and go down to Blur, Gaussian Blur. Let's go ahead and see what a 6 does for us. That's enough. You can see that. You can see it's softer on the edges. Click OK. And so you've got that. Select both of them. Remember, all you got to do is grab a piece. Go up to the board object on the pull-down menu. Go down to Clipping Mask Make. Hmm. Well, it didn't really work. I mean, it, it made the oval, but it didn't make it soft. Now, here's the reason. Clipping masks work with vector shapes. Vector shapes, in their pure form, are a path, and they might be filled with something. might even be a blur, but it ignores that. It just looks at that cut it out with a pair of scissors kind of edge. So that's not working. Let's press undo. I love undo. Okay, now we don't need to change anything up here. What we need to change is from a clipping mask to an opacity mask. And we do that through the transparency panel right over here. Let me bring that guy out here, put him right about here, make it easy to see. Now we have these two items selected. You can see them in a sense over here now. You're one click away. Click Make Mask. Now, why did it work? We use the color white as the fill, so I'm hoping you did that. White means visible. As the mask goes to transparency or it goes to a different shade of gray, going toward black, things become more transparent. So we're able to achieve something that years ago, this, this is not new, but years ago, trying to make a soft edge in Adobe Illustrator, and we've just done it using a vector object. The oval was a vector. Now look down here. This is a photograph of some clouds. We've seen this before. Pick up your rectangle tool this time, and let's come over here and draw us a rectangle that fits exactly that shape. You should snap to it. If it's not perfect, that's fine. But if you can, get it right on top. So now it's right on top, exactly on top. Select it. Let's pick up our selection tool. Make sure you have the fill selected over here. Come over into your swatches and select this swatch right here. Now it's a gradient, a typical white to black, run of the mill gradient. Select both of these things. Just take a little piece like that. You'll get them both. Select Make Mass. It's not getting lighter, it's getting more transparent. So if I come over here and move it up so you can see this, as I go this way, where it gets lighter, that means more of the clouds are going to be visible. And if I go this way, I see more of her, because as it gets darker, I see less of the clouds. You're creating a gradient transparency in Adobe Illustrator with an opacity mask. That's pretty cool when you think about it. Now, if I select it again, we have control. This button here allows me to manipulate or maneuver the graphic, and this one allows me to change or modify the mask. So if I select this one, see a little red little box go around it here. If I come over here and drag this one and get more black, 
You see it becomes more transparent on the right because as it gets to black, it goes away. You are in total control, but remember, although you can use colors, colors don't make sense. It's looking for brightness levels. Gray or transparency are the two best things. And we use shades of gray down here, and we used a blur to transparency up here, and they both worked. Now let's go to number two in our hit parade. These words right here were actually converted. And notice one thing here which can frustrate you. I can't select anything. That's because the last thing I did in transparency was work on the mask, and I need to click here. Now you're kind of free to do whatever you want. I converted those words into an outline. Not really necessary, but I did. So let's go ahead and try the same thing on these. Let's go ahead, say, for example, and pick up that same gradient and apply it. So you've got something like that going on. We'll go ahead and we will select both. Just a little cut like that will get them. And then we'll click Make Mask. Now notice they get lighter as it goes toward the right because that's the darker areas. And again, if we do select it and we come over here and say, I want to adjust the mask, we can come over here. And if you want to do this, you can make them more transparent on either side or less up to you. If we come back over and click on the clouds, maybe we want to change the position of the clouds in relationship to the mask. You want to turn this off right here, which is a lock that puts them both in step with each other. And I can then come over here and basically you know, rearrange the clouds. Now here's something that's kind of fun with something like this. We have a button here that says clip. Now what clip means is basically clip out everything outside the mask. But what would happen if we say, don't do that? Well, watch. Isn't that neat? Basically, you have the word clouds being spelled out with clouds. You can still see the clouds behind there, but the mask is controlling how the clip works. It's a really interesting way to make it all work for you. Now, if you just don't want to do this anymore, you do have an invert, and that just reverses the black to white, but you have a release button up here. And if you release it, it takes you back, and this could be a month later. This is non-destructive. Let's go to our last one, artboard number three. In this last one, we're about to stand masks on their heads. Everything we have done up to this point, we followed the rule that the mask must be a vector, yes? Not with opacity masks. That's a photograph. That is not a vector. I did not trace it. That is a photograph. I grayscaled it out. Now think. If an area of the mask is darker, I'll see more of what's underneath it. If it's lighter, I'll see less. So let's select our two pieces. Before I do that, let me show you what's underneath it. Just this big scribble thing. Take that back. Now let's try it. Again, remember, we're using a photograph. The scribble, which is that graphic style coming through, is being controlled on what I see of the scribble based on the shades of gray right in here. Photographs, doesn't matter. But I would suggest if you're planning on using them for a mask is that you grayscale them so you get a better idea of exactly what's happening. Masks are really cool, whether they're clipping or opacity, and they give us a level of control of our objects in Illustrator that we've like never had before. On to the next.